Welcome back to our Survivor 42 podcast. We're coming off of the latest episode, Van Guy, how you feeling? Oh, this episode. It was all right. I mean, I'm liking the fact that we're getting to see, you know, some tribe dynamics starting to emerge. The way the votes didn't fell kind of were interesting. I, I kind of am curious to see how that shakes out again. Wish we would have got to hear I talk about Lydia and that vote from last week. I really was going to hope yeah. they were going to address that, and they didn't. But it was a good episode. What'd you think? Yeah, it was good. Um, it was a little too Big Brother esque for me. You know, we got this big ass alliance, and they're kind of a very annoying alliance too. So, not the best vibes for me. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I don't know how tight they are though. Um, it seems like there may be a core group from that even emerging, emerging like a core five or six. And uh, the ones who voted together weren't the ones I was expecting to vote together. Yeah, true. Also, the problem with this alliance is there seems like to be a lot of chiefs. So there's not a, yeah, everybody wants to lead this damn alliance. And yeah, and some of them are very delusional. Yeah, that's a fact. Some of them are like super delusional. Um, but everybody has different targets. They all want someone different. And uh, that's never a good thing, man. That's it's, that's going to catch up to this alliance sooner than later, which is why I still think some players like Marianne and like Tori still have a shot because I definitely see this alliance fracturing. And when they do, whoever's not in that alliance right now is going to be the hot free agents to pick up. Oh, yeah. The, there's no way this lasts beyond this next episode because the one thing Survivor got right, first of all, is if they're not going to have the uh, like a tribe swap, then they have to do this thing where there's like a double eviction like last season where they split it into five. So it kind of breaks up dynamics. Yeah. I kind of like that twist, I guess. But also, there's just a lot of stupid people. <laughs> this is how I ranked my rankings. This I rank my rankings different and I apply throughout all the rankings because of it. I ranked from least dumb to most dumb this week is how I did my ranking. Least dumb to most dumb. Yes. So, like, you probably put, like, Mike at number one then. <laughs> He's um, up there. Yeah, like, least dumb to most dumb. Uh, yeah, no, and that's fair because the criteria of scoring this season on any traditional way is – um, it's hard because some people that – seem to be in control one week like uh like we had omar in control last week and the week before and looking in pretty good control and he has a chance in my mind to rebound next week if we see he voted that way in some sort of strategic manner then i think it'll gain steam for me but if he's actually on the outs of that big alliance uh it doesn't bode well for him and it was looking really good for him last week so you know i think these rankings are going to be pretty fluid at least mine are very fluid week to week because I don't think there's clear front runners anymore. I really don't. I think it's a, it's up for grabs. Yeah, my rankings have been very up and down the whole season. Any final thoughts on Chanel? You know, she thought she was playing chess and everybody else were playing checkers, but she was playing Monopoly. She was playing a game of her own, I feel like, this entire time. Yo, that's so well said because I was actually going to agree with her to an extent. Like, we kind of already addressed that she was kind of a game bot. Uh, and when you're kind of a game bot, it's important, I think, at least from what I've seen in a lot of these games, you have to have some social skill to back it up. You have to. Uh, you can't just be pure game bot. And I feel like in a lot of ways, we maybe we just didn't get to see it through the edit, but it, it, she didn't seem to be very good at building relationships with people outside of maybe Daniel way earlier in the season. Uh, and so, And he was also a very cerebral person. So she probably just didn't click with anyone else. And I think it got her on the outs. Uh, I do think she's really, you could just tell she's a deep thinker. Um, I just think this wasn't her game, man. This just wasn't the right mix of people for her. Yeah, I agree. She definitely seemed to be completely out of it. Not a lot of connections that she made. Well, the, her one connection did throw her in the bus too. So that doesn't help. Yeah, no, it's true. And I think, you know, a lot of people just forget to have fun when they're out there. It's Survivor, yo. Like, I get that it's for a, a crap load of money and, like, it's, you know, it's intense. But it's kind of like Rocks Roy on the, you know, on his little trip. You just sometimes you just got to take a step back and appreciate it all. And I think uh, she was so in game mode that it, it really hurt her. All right. Any other final thoughts on the episode before we go into the rankings? 
No, nah, uh, just good episode. You know, we're seeing some cool dynamics come up. All right. Well, we are going to begin with number 10, and Aspen might be joining us shortly, but we will awesome. go with... Romeo has fallen to number 10, which I actually kind of had him higher on my dumb list, so it's not me, but... I ranked him 10th. He's on my team, so I'm not <laughs> my homer. Ranking. I, I guarantee you my rankings are not homerish, even though I may have one of my persons at first and one of my persons at 10. Um, I'm not a homer. The, and Romeo's just, he seems on the outs right now in every way possible. He feels like he's part of the big alliance, yet he was, you know, no, no, he feels like he's part of it, but he's definitely not. And yeah, it, I feel like his clock is just, it's limited. Like he's, his time is coming soon. Yeah, I just like that at least he is the one that wants to shake things up because, you know, if you're on the outs, you got to shake things up. So I'm hoping he still can. And with next week's dynamics, hopefully he's on one of the five that he can has stuff to work with and could vote somebody out with that. He... Or at least give us some good drama and, like, while trying to shake it up. And I think he could be good for that. Whether or not his um, endeavor fails or succeeds, we'll see. But he's the kind of player who is clearly – not scared to just mouth vomit. And I think when you're a player who's in trouble and you have the ability to mouth vomit, you throw enough stuff at a wall, man. Something sticks sometimes. Sometimes. And, uh, so, you know, we'll see. But he just seems so on the outs. And he doesn't have a power of the people on the outs. It's just... What do you think he needs to do? Do you think there's... Kenny, who's like everyone on the outs? It's just him... Tori and Marianne. Marianne. Him, Tori, and Marianne are the ones I mean, They need to use Marianne's advantage. And 100%. Get well, somebody big out. But they need to figure out that they're on the outs. Like, I know everyone feels like they're on the outs, and when you are on the outs, you are you never know who is on the ends unless people are just going back to camp admitting their vote. It, you know, so you never really know who's on the outs and who's not. And that that that's going to be, can they get Mary in? Can they, do they have enough awareness to realize she's got a power, but, uh, and, and we can, you know, we have to do something or do they feel comfortable with enough people? Yeah. Also, Mary Ann's not quite as on the outs as they are because she has intel from Omar who's not on the outs really. And she's also mo most aware, I believe, of the three about being yeah. on the outs. Like she even had a little segment you know, where she was talking about how she knows she's on the outs. And so I think, I think Tori also probably knows she's on the outs, but I think Romeo is the one of those three that I think is least aware of just how much on the outs they are. And that, you know, for me, there you go. Dumbest to, you know, like, like least self-aware for sure for Romeo. I feel like he's starting to get it though. Cause the whole him and Dre dynamics being so bad all of a sudden. And now that he saw them votes coming for him too, yeah, no, he, he knows. Yeah. This, this next episode is going to be very, very uh, important. Well, we move on to another outsider at number nine, which is Tori. She keeps surviving. That's her story this season, that she can survive. But I think she's going to have to keep winning challenges to keep surviving. Um, yeah, I can see that, man. She has won the last two. This is a big, just like Romeo, this is going to be a big episode for these people that are on the outs. Because this is going to be a big episode to test whether that core alliance is really strong together or whether it's fractured all over. I'm of the belief, looking at that group, that there's going to be more than one fracture. There's several fractures in that group. So I do believe that Tori, the Tories, the Romeos, the, the Marianne's all have a shot to get back into this. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I had Tori eight, so I had her pretty low. And I think maybe I only had her at eight because I still just have this weird intuition she runs deep. But uh, I mean, she's a great competitor, which we've kind of been, you know, she, she's, she's, and she's good at the balance looking type stuff. Yeah. Which tends to be the most important stuff to be good at in these individual immunities. So, you know, I think if Tori can survive the first time she doesn't have immunity, I think she's actually got a shot at weaseling her way. Uh, a lot further. Yeah, she's also very aware. I mean, she saw the paint on Drea. I think she has a good eye on what's going on. She's just another one similar to Chanel that 
she can't, she doesn't she's just not able to make connections in this game exactly no she struggles with that too um i think she has a great start to a resume though if she finds herself at the end true especially if there's enough better juries i guess you never you never know it happens man <laughs> it happens <laughs> any other thoughts on tori Still my dark horse, man. Just still my dark horse to somehow go all the way. Well, she's on my team, and I lost another person, so I guess I'll take it. All right. Number eight is – who even is this? I forget about her. Lindsay comes in at number eight. Mike Jones, as, as we say, because, you know, who? Who? Uh, we don't see anything from Lindsay. Like at all. I know. She has the worst edit this season because we don't see anything really. Hey, could be the Erica treatment. They could they <laughs> could, could just be, be. <laughs> I would I don't still don't think so, but could be. Um yeah, yeah. I just I've lost faith. Like at the beginning, she seems like she's in still in a good spot. So it's weird, you know, whenever I really think she's in a, a spot to go a lot further than maybe eighth, wherever she's at. Um almost almost in my mind for sure she's going to make it further than that. But her, like, just her edit is so non-existent that it's hard for me to believe that by this point in the game, the winner hasn't at least been shown. <laughs> yeah, that's very weird. Like, do you think she's someone that's maybe going to make the end and just get no votes or something? I mean, the little bit we hear people talk about Lindsay, it's always good stuff. So yeah. it does appear as if she's well liked by her tribe mates so i don't know if it i don't know if it's necessarily a jump to say she's not liked enough to win at the end i just don't see it. i mean i don't i mean i'm just going by her edit yeah I just just by her edit i don't think she can make the end is is i think where yeah. i'm at with it. um it's so non-existent at least erica got to smash the little <laughs> <True>. thing <laughs> like you know she had something shown by this point We've gotten like two confessionals from Lindsay all season, and they were short and not. Yeah, it's rough because for me, it's like if your only edit is that you're like the the woman on the bottom of a male duo, then I mean, why even apply? That's my problem with Lindsay's game. I mean, maybe it's not totally her fault. Maybe she's playing this good game, and Survivor doesn't know how to edit women like we say every week. But God, her edit is just not good. Yeah, she could be giving confessionals that are like. Saying exactly what she's doing. I'm pitting myself here and here. You know, we just don't like they're not they're giving her nothing. And that's a shame. Yo. <laughs> Yo. Yo. Am I in this bitch or what? Yeah. You in. Oh, let's fucking go. All right. I had to I had to, you know, make a little boss call. All right. So uh well let's let's recap. What are your what are your thoughts on Chanel going home? Deserved it. That damn fan guy. What's up, fan guy? You look you look young and handsome. Okay. <laughs> Little baby face out here, boy. <laughs> God damn. Okay. Um. Yep. Yeah, she she deserved it. I mean, I I, I kind of seen it coming. I I honestly thought they was gonna switch it up to make it be Romeo for one second. But I ain't gonna lie. So Survivor got one more bad episode before I cut their ass off. Like oh, you're that sick of it. It's just like the editing. It's like, bro, like. I, all right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna say this before we even fucking start this shit. I feel like they doing Marianne wrong, you know. Like I feel like they, I I kind of feel like they trying to embarrass her a little bit and make her like, like we obviously know she's being bullied, y'all. We know that, and making her be like, I was the weird kid in school, and now they're out there picking on me and shit. Like, even if that is the case. Survivor just has a weird way of bringing things to people's attention. Yeah, you really hate the way they do that, huh? how they just want to make everyone be a sob story. Everyone yes. is their sob story. And then on top of that, after after they do this whole big rigmarole about her being bullied, obviously producers is like, let me back up. First of all, Jeff bitch ass probes is going to say, all right, y'all, um, last year we did the same exact thing. And nobody found it. And this year, somebody better find it. Producers, somebody better find it. And I'm like, <laughs> True. You know? he's like, if not, I'm going to be surprised and kind of pissed off. <laughs> like, bro. <laughs> bro, oh my God. 
We get it. We get it, Jeff. We get it. <laughs> like, can you be a little bit more conspicuous? Like, bro, don't tell us that. Don't look at us, uh, us being a miracle. Don't look at America and be like, somebody better find this shit and then secretly be burning a hole through the producers. Like, y'all better make <laughs> somebody find it. Tell somebody to come over here and where it's at. Which was weird. And I'm like, you know what? Okay, all right, whatever. And then I'm convinced at this point because I seen it and it was it was bad editing on Survivor's part. But I'm convinced that they just be people know what rocks they choose. And it ain't no like random bag of rocks. Where is it? Like Marianne got the white rock on purpose. And so, so I'm like, all right, you know what? That makes sense. That adds up. They just edited her to be needing a sob story and then they're about to give her a free advantage. Okay, that makes sense. And then gonna make Drea, Drea, who has all the advantages in the goddamn world, be like, Marianne, I'll switch. Cause I don't eat peanut butter jelly. Like, bitch, everybody eat peanut butter and jelly. Stop fucking lying. You do eat <laughs> peanut butter and jelly. You don't eat peanut butter, bitch. You don't eat peanut butter. After you've been out there starving, you wasn't gonna fuck that peanut butter and jelly sandwich up. Stop fucking lying. <laughs> Come on, bro. You, I'm not going for it. I'm not going for it. I'm not taking that shit, Survivor. Jeff, if you're watching this, Jeff. Dad, have you been watching my Big Brother rants? Because you are on one. Ask me. Hey, I'm on one. I'm on one today, boy. I'm on it. So, uh, yeah. I I was very not impressed by that whole situation. And then her, never, her narrating it over there, like, I was sitting down. And then people started coming towards me. I'm like, bitch, you've been in this same spot. You knew people was coming towards you. Like, it's just very, like... Uh, you know, like, right, come on, tighten up, tighten up, editors, producers, tighten the fuck up. Jeff, bitch ass pro. <laughs> that's that's it. That's you ever get on Survivor? <laughs> that's, I'm gonna love that. If he ever finds this, you ain't gonna get on Survivors. You better hope Jeff, bitch ass pro, say why. <laughs> Jeff, bitch, he's gotta have some sense of humor about it. No, bro, uh, how he sucked Jonathan Dick, like, ugh. Call me sir. Call me sir. Like, you better be okay with me calling him Jeff Bitch Ass. <laughs> uh, well, do, you, do you have any thoughts on Romeo or Tori who are kind of on the outsiders right now over this annoying alliance? Uh, Romeo is being too paranoid, but I think it's fucked up how Drea dropped his ass and was like, he's like, you won't even look at me. I'm like, <laughs> oh God, this poor dude. He had every right to be paranoid. And he's just trying to cause chaos, which he should be doing because he's on the bottom, which is what we said earlier. Absolutely. At 1,000%. I mean, he was 100% right in everything he did. I don't see a problem with it at all. I mean, I support it. But, I mean, it was just funny how Drea is, like, not being, like, girl, at least, like, chit-chat with him and fake it. Fake it till you make it. Like, don't just, like – and and – Drea, God, I, I'm, I'm having mixed feelings about Drea. She just say certain shit. I think I'm on Fan Guys page. Like, she said some shit at Tribal, and I almost slapped her ass. You know, like, it's just bad social game. It's like bad social cues. And I noticed because I'm a very, I'm a very, very social person. Y'all notice about me. But when you in you, you in Tribal, where you potentially could be voted off, I guess I, she just felt so comfortable. This bitch is going to open her mouth to say, I can hear my mama saying now, don't trust them, y'all. These ain't This ain't your family. Don't trust these hoes. Fuck these bitches or whatever she said. That's pretty much what I heard. And it's like, girl, they can hear you. You know, like they can hear you just say that you don't look at them like family. My ass would have been in there like, I, uh, I love all y'all like family. After this game, we're going to get together and meet up and smoke blunts. Even if I'm lying, even if I don't want to smoke with these motherfuckers, they going to think I do. <laughs> it's true it's true um, any thoughts on tori or Lindsay? tori uh wait which one did he tori and Lindsay Lindsay's are- the non-existent one that okay. has no idea tori's the one that keeps winning challenges now this bitch is finna comp out tori is finna fuck around and comp out and y'all thought it was gonna be my boy jonathan she woke no, up you me. thought it was gonna be your boy jonathan <laughs> i didn't think it was gonna be your boy jonathan but you see how nobody even said his name either. Even That's though, he, you, honestly, this was the perfect time to take Jonathan out. If I was them, I would have did it. I ain't even gonna lie. I would have took Jonathan out myself on this round. If he wouldn't have won, I would have took his ass out. But hey, he's still in there. So good shit, Jonathan. Good job, boy. He killing it. Like I told y'all, he would. Well, we're not on Jonathan yet. Okay. okay. We will move on to number seven, which is Roxroy, who has. <laughs> 
keeps rising in our rate rankings, even though right. I don't know what the demand is. You know what? It's because I didn't send mine in where I would have yeah, tanked his probably. ass. I had him at nine, Aspen. Okay. I had him at nine. Thank well, you. Well, honestly, he was uh, pretty high on my rankings. I told Fangai earlier, I ranked mine from least dumb to most dumb. And mm. this past week, he wasn't one of the most dumb. So That's fair. That's yeah, fair. my ranking was more of uh, his all his game from the beginning to now because I don't think he had a particularly bad week. No one's talking about him. Nobody's targeting him. He seems to be with the majority. So Roxroy is in a good place. I just think Roxroy's long term prospects are not that good, uh, just because of what we've seen up to this point, which is not much, and it's kind of just him being a grump around camp. Right. Agreed. I agree. I agree. Rox Roy is shot out. And then, you know what? I would have simply tanked his ass because he got he shot, must have shot five to six balls. <laughs> one of them embarrassing his black culture. You an embarrassment, Rox Roy. If you're watching this, you embarrassed us because you can't <laughs> shoot. Bro. Well, at least he didn't say money, you know, like last season. Not sure. Who was that? Who was that that kept saying money? What was his name? JD or something? I don't know. Oh, it was JD. Oh, my God. That dude. All right. Let, let me <laughs> calm down. I need to calm down. <laughs> yeah, it was it was JD and Baltimore. They are what we call Oreos. Um, and uh, y'all know, y'all know how it is. Or fan guy is like a reverse Oreo, you know, like Fangai I was about to say the same thing, I just didn't know how to say it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you're right, you're right. Fan guy is a reverse <laughs> Oreo, and fucking Rox Roy is a Oreo. So, um, it was it was sad to see him like do so bad, and then Jonathan be like, get the fuck out the way, Rox Roy, and come in like single handedly. Shut that shit down. It was, it's at this point, it's like more entertaining for me to watch Jonathan, you know, like give Jonathan his own show and just let me watch him. I'm so you. tired of Jonathan. So tired of Jonathan. I ain't. Oh, whoop de doo. Here comes Jonathan again. Another challenge. I, I might as well just watch that. Beyond the Edge after Survivor if I want to watch challenges. <laughs> Nick, Nick. He's a beast, though. He's he is. Beast. He is. is. He's, he's I could I could do without the Mr. Well. Jeffs, but he's a beast. He's a beast. That's fair. That's fair. Any other thoughts on Rock's Roy? I agree. His long term game isn't hot. He's not gonna win. He doesn't have much of an edit either. He's like the one dude who's just do- doesn't get an edit much much of much of an edit at all. Probably because he's boring and basic. Probably. I would love to see the outtakes of him just uh, complaining about people's camp camp habits. They don't oh. grab enough wood. Like I hope there's just a B reel of rocks really just making the most mundane like it probably is. complaints about people. <laughs> like, took yeah. overtook their portion of fish. Oh god. Oh, god. <laughs> they, they ate way too much rice. Right. No, that I can see it. I can see it. <laughs> all right. Well, she has all the advantages, but she's coming in at number six in our rankings. Number one on fan guys, but low on mine and Mike's because I Love. still think her game is bad. Her wait, game is Mike, bad. Wait, wait, wait. Did Mike send in his rankings and still not yeah. go? No, that's that's funny. That's a real one. That's that's what's up, Mike. Shout out to you because I know you're going to be watching this. We miss you, Mike. Uh, but how the fuck you going to put Dre at number one? Fan guy, please explain yourself right now. Let me go get my joint in the light while you do it, too. Yo, it's it's honestly not even that long of an explanation. She's got, like, what, four powers or five powers? She can literally protect herself from half the future votes. Like, and if you get to the end and you're like, I had four powers, like, that's just impressive. Like, some people just vote, like, if you were, you know, you... I mean, look, she's great at fighting powers. I mean, that's just great at fighting advantages. But she's kind of like the modern Russell hands. Russell used to find those fucking immunity idols like that. But then he would always lose in the end. So, I mean, she still has to play the game, I think. She had intuition about the flip, too. The yeah. last week's twist. You know, that's that song. I mean, she, she okay, but I just... I don't see her using. I honestly, they giving her a shin edit, bro. They giving her a shin edit. 
Like she this most powerful, most power finding motherfucker, even though she did not find that power. They handed it to her, which we ain't gonna go there, but um <laughs> I I just I don't see her using them properly. I don't I don't know. I don't see it going how how we obviously hope that it will go. And I won't honestly and not because I have to, because I'm black, but I want Drea to win, you know? Like, I genuinely want her to win because I feel like she doing a good job. She being very, she being social to a to a extent that is keeping her, you know, in the, in the, not the worst, but she did a bad job with Romeo. I mean, I, she definitely is going to have to, like, at this point, if she don't have the inclination to make things right with Romeo because he's going to be on a jury and that could be her vote, if she treat it right, then I don't got no hope for her. Yeah, socially, I just don't find her very good at all. I mean, the one thing she does well is, I guess, she kind of goes with the flow, which at this point kind of works for her. But I don't know if that's going to work for her in the long run. I also think that, you know, having all these advantages is great and all. It's kind of a double-edged sword because a lot of different people know about all of her advantages. So, like, if it really comes out, people talk a lot in these games. As you all know, people talk a lot in these games. So if it ever comes out how many advantages she really has, how is she not grow her own dark in that? I think it's a testament that it hasn't come out. That might be a testament to her social game that we don't see. The fact that people aren't targeting her at all despite them knowing about three of the powers. Nobody knows about the new one, but, you know, people just know about all her stuff. They're not even talking to each other. It's just wild. And, I mean, I'm not saying I think her social game is, like, A+. It's it's not. You know, she's showing big holes, like, the way she dealt deal, is dealing with Romeo, like Aspen said. Um, but for me, look, if someone has four powers when there's ten people left in the game and you're in the majority and you watched her vote the right way this vote, um, so clearly she's on like the inner circle of the big alliance. I mean, why, why, you know, she's got as good a shot as anybody, I think. To her. That's fair. That's, That's fair. fair. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I think she has a better shot than our number five. I know it's not Jonathan. Cool. Number five is high. Hmm. So wait, high and Jonathan is the last two people I got left on my team, right? Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm feeling feeling pretty good. I feel like High is doing. I feel like High is doing okay. I feel like this man is delusional with a capital D. He let the pre-merge get to his head. He still thinks he has all these numbers at the merge, and he has Mike and Mike only. But in reality, I think Mike has him. So High doesn't have anybody, but he still thinks he's running shit, and he's not. He's getting a foolish edit at the merge. I mean, he is because he is looking a little foolish, a little bit. With I will say that when when they was like, they can't, yeah, that little whole before tribal scramble and shit was a debacle. But um, I mean, his name ain't coming up, you know. Ain't nobody like coming at him right now, even if he ain't doing the great. Hey, it's bound to happen. He just seems more emotional to me now too. Like we're seeing these little outbursts from him that are very emotional in nature. And he seemed to be really under control pre-merge, like of his emotions and not letting that kind of stuff get to him. Then he votes out his closest person on the whole game and easily could have swung that, I think. If he had actually put his we, neck we out for her. Last week, he would have had the numbers if he would have just tried more. If he would have tried as hard to get out Romeo uh, to save Lydia. Yeah, if he had just put his neck out on the line for her and said, guys, let's really, let's go this way. Lydia's with us, or just, you know, give a compelling case. He let his number one ally down, and now he seems to be having deteriorating relationships with everyone because he's just, he seems to just be more emotional with his game. I mean, I will say though, like, hi, everybody's complaining how Romeo's paranoid. Hi's paranoid. He's the one scrambling. No, he was, but he just, he, I guess he's doing it with a little more like pizzazz than, uh, than Romeo. Cause I think Romeo, and I won't know why, but Romeo and High remind me of each other. I think it's both because they both like not. It's both because they foreign and both gay. So I'm like, ooh, the foreign gay guys, you know. But like, what happened to their connection two episodes ago? 
Remember when they were bonding by having another LGBTQ representation on there? I don't even, I don't even, did I see that? I don't think I did. No, it's probably one of your fast forward episodes. True, true. I watched this one all the way through. This explains why. Well, I this is why you're so glad. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> better start watching more full episodes. After. I know, I know, I know. Ugh. God. I got one more thing to say about Drea. When your hip arm comes back covered in red, say you blading, just say it was a little cut and you bled. Yo, we did not talk about that. We did not talk about that. We didn't. Just because say it was blood. <laughs> Drea, sweetie, sweetie, baby girl. It was very clear that you were not painting. <laughs> and Tori, dumbass, out of everybody, caught on to her. And then when it told people, too, it ain't like she caught on and didn't say nothing. She like, Drea, line, she got something to hide. I figured it out. I was Sherlock Holmes in this bitch. And, like, she did. She did. I'm like, wow. Drea, you actually did not even try, bitch. You could have went down to the beach. And then, like... Are you really telling me Tori seen Drea have a piece of paper sticking out her pants? Which probably, because I think Drea got on like these like legging short things. Yeah. So maybe she did. But like, are you really doing that bad of a job at hiding your shit? Like, girl, you need to learn how to tuck like the gays do. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> ah. uh. <laughs> Any other thoughts on hide? I mean, he's he's in an all right spot, but he's not yeah. in a great spot. Yeah, he okay. He, I mean, I, I would like what I think. Fang, I said this a few episodes ago, but he's like, you know, I'm just going out there who's not being dumb and causing drama, and I'm like, well, Hi ain't necessarily got that much attention on him, so I think High's being dumb and is about to start causing more drama. He was towards the bottom of my list. Okay, Nick. Anyway, moving on to number four, which is Marianne. <clears throat> wait, like where, number... wait, where did y'all rank Marianne at? I, I ranked her third. I have her at seven. Okay. What about my cat her at five? Okay, okay. She ain't doing the worst, but I mean, she definitely is in a bad spot. Like, that. And maybe it's because they just make it. I do not like how they making her out to be like this sad sob case. And like, unless, unless Sia is going to give her $10,000 at the end, which, you know, she'll be doing that shit sometimes or whatever. I don't know. Back in the day, back in the day. But wasn't that kind of like Cochran's edit too? Which season? His first season? His first season, actually. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Huh. It was the what was me? I'm a nerd at it. And I just am like, I don't, I don't like it because like, I'm very much a nerd. I am a nerd. Don't you see these glasses? Nerd, motherfucker. Okay, Aspen. <laughs> <laughs> just <'cause> your glasses. <laughs> but I mean, like, I, I, it just, it just bothers me so much. It's like, stop, stop trying to make us. Let's, let's be real though. I don't think she's in that bad a position compared to some of the other people in this game. Like, no. of all the outsiders, she still has connections within the Big Alliance. And honestly, since Omar runs his side of the Big Alliance, in my opinion, she's really in a good... I think she, if she plays this way, she could last a while. Because she could play the middle, honestly. I guess. But she too she too emotional. She, I mean, I really respect how she handled this whole sitting out thing. That was That's the reason mm -hmm. that I would have bumped her up from whatever I was going to rank her, I would have bumped her up one because of how she handled being like, oh, guys, I'm sitting out so y'all can, I'm sacrificing my life for y'all to eat and don't send me home, you know? And it's like, no, it kind of worked. But, I mean, for personally, for me, it wouldn't have worked. But, I mean, I can I could see why she would do it. And it's, it's, it's okay right now, but she was on the outside. She was on the outs. And, of course, who was that? Lindsay that came up was was it her and Lindsay talking to her and Tori one of the r random white girls that I can never differentiate her and a white girl was talking after the vote and then she's like no I'm still with you I'm still with you I still trust you you know I'm like but, but no, you don't. no you don't you don't though you don't yeah they don't but Omar has Lindsay at least we don't get Lindsay's at it so who fucking knows but Jonathan 
will do whatever Omar says, I think. I think Jonathan is will go with the wind, whichever way the wind blows is where Jonathan will go. So if Omar gets to Jonathan last, he's gonna do what Omar wants to do. And right now Omar's protecting Marianne. Because why not? Those four could should be the strongest within this big alliance, and I kind of think they kind of are. Yeah, and that's why they're keeping Mary around the, around the longest of the people who aren't in the actual alliance. Marianne's got the best shot of those people at penetrating and getting into that alliance, and she's still got a power. Um, so I don't think she's in a bad spot. I kind of did it. It's funny. Me and Aspen are on the same page because I did exactly that. There were three outsiders. I wanted to make rank Marianne eighth, but she just has a power, and she handled the situation pretty well. Uh, you know, if it's a comp, you know you can't win. I think the sitting out for the rice is an okay play with this many people left. And you have players like Mike who are going to be real vocal and even Jonathan who are going to be real vocal about supporting the person who sat out for the rice. I think if it was down to like six people and this situation came up, sitting out for the rice is not the right move. It ain't going to buy you anything. No. And if you did, they still going to send your ass home if you was the target. Exactly. Um, but because there were still a couple of other obvious targets from the Chanel, Tori, Romeo trio, I think this was a good time for her to earn points and food. And um, so I think she's in a, as okay a spot from the outsider as you can be. Any final thoughts on Marianne? She's aware too, man. Like just she's aware. She's aware she's on the outs. So I think if somebody has the highest potential to play their idol correctly, it's going to be her. Well, it's because yeah. she honestly and it, it's fucked up, but – being bullied and picked on and shit do make you be aware of shit, you know? Like, you are more like, damn, this motherfucker is treating me how I used to get treated in third grade when I used to have to go cry and eat in the bathroom by myself or whatever happens to kids who get bullied. I don't know. I ain't get bullied. Y'all know I'm a kid. Yeah, because you're not a nerd. Exactly. Thanks for <laughs> I, that out. I, was, <laughs> I was bullied, and what you're saying is true. You pick up on little, just little aggressions. I mean, mm -hmm. I would call it just a more, like, yeah, just like a microaggression on, like, a human level where you just belittle, you're belittling someone. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you you do pick up on a lot of this. You get a vibe for the people who just don't care for you or want to assert their dominance over you a lot of times. Yeah, yeah, and I feel like that'll take her far because she is aware, but it is, like, if you can't, if you don't see that and then, like, switch up how you fucking moving and shit, you know, like, because that shit happened to me. Like, it's people that don't really fuck with me, and you know what? When I notice that, when I peep that shit, I switch up how I how I act around them and stuff. She so. has time though. She needs to, you know, maybe wait out her moment. Okay. And she sells Omar, so I think that's what's kind of keeping her kind of. On. I guess I can't tell if that Omar shit with her is fake though. He's like, don't use your idol unless I say, because I feel like he's setting her up to like make her feel comfortable, and then Dre gonna fuck around and be like, Marianne, give me your idol type. Shit. <laughs> that's just that's it's possible. It's possible. No, no. All right, number three is Mike. This guy, he's just yeah. climbed. He's Miley Cyrus of this survivor. He, he's... No, for real. For real. Oh, my God. Like, I remember I specifically us all being like, ew, we don't want Mike 55 and up ass getting a, what do you say, <laughs> getting a half off discount at Denny's face ass. Like, <laughs> And now look at him. Look at him just sitting. He honestly is doing way better than all the old people that has. It, it, this motherfucker remind me of, what's that one old ass person who won? It was an old motherfucker who won on here. There's Wait, been a few. It ain't been that many, Nick. Calm down. There's been a few. Tina sold. Tina, oh, that. He better than Tina. Bro, he is, he is playing better than Tina. And I'm like, wow. Wow. Like, and I think it. I think it got a lot to do with where he come from and like how he he he's very street smart. I don't, I don't know if Mike is I don't think he's black. He might be mixed, but you could tell that he grew up around some motherfuckers, maybe in the hood, maybe not, though. I can't really tell, but he definitely got a read on these motherfuckers. He he what we call like he like an OG that know how to read the streets, you know, like he is very much like. You know what? <laughs> uh, so much going on in my little brain right now. <laughs> we can tell. <laughs> Mike, I, I, I like how Mike is handling being old and being out there. He honestly, for the first time the whole season, I'm like, you know what, fan guy? 
you need to take that shit back because he actually might have a chance. He actually might have a chance, bro. If they let his ass get further enough, he'll 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 win. He got the story. He got the he got the. I'm a firefighter, and I don't know why people feel bad for firefighters and love them so much. I mean, I guess I do know why because they fighting fires and shit. But still, yeah. I don't know. I agree. No, I agree with you, Aspen. Um, this is the first week that I actually said that to myself. I said, yo, this guy can win. I did. And it's because he's either just like a real, like not a, I'm not going to say a real good dude, but a real and a good dude. Like he just seems like both of those things, or he's really good at faking it. And either way, it bodes well in in this short of a time period because your true colors if you're good enough at faking it you can hide them for a month or two i know people are like you can't but you can yeah um so the way he's you know getting into the religious stuff with omar he's got this bond over here with jonathan he just he's playing everybody he seems to be really good with each individual person and they all are like mike solid that's all you ever hear from anyone is how solid mike is and man that's where else do you want to be that's like in one of the I should I ranked him fifth and I should have put him higher, quite honest. Mike has zero votes in jury so far, just to be clear. I don't think Lydia nor Chanel would vote for Mike. So he has some building to do if he's gonna actually win the game. But I do think he has a shot. And I don't like that this whole he wants to bro down with the guys. Cause I feel like honestly, that's gonna help Jonathan more than any him. So that could be a mistake. mistake. Most of Mike's close connections are the dudes. Like when you think about it, it, it has been mostly a, a dude centric game for Mike. Um, and I'm with you, Nick. I don't know if he's got the votes at the end, but he's definitely going to have people who like him. So if, the, if whoever he's sitting next oh, to, yeah, he's gonna someone have who, who isn't liked or has pissed people off, he's going to have a good shot. I'm he's just saying, somebody, you know, I'm just saying so far, I don't know if Lydia and Chanel would vote for him, especially Chanel, because Mike's been like, oh my God, Chanel voted for me. That's the. No, in the coffin, and then he voted for her in that same episode, so it doesn't make any sense. So I think she, he has some building to do if he's going to get votes to win, because so far I think he's over two. Wait, is is Lydia in the jury? I thought she didn't make jury. Well, maybe you're right, actually. Okay. I don't remember. This, this whole fake merge throws me off. So I guess yeah. he doesn't have one vote in the jury so far. Exactly. Okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, him and Chanel, which... I, I, as a as a person of color, I would like to see the behind the scenes between him and Chanel because it's very rare that people of color don't bond instantly, and it usually be about some weird shit. But Chanel is kind of a she she kind of an Oreo too slick kind of you know so I don't know I don't know what it was I mean she also is not as what what thing I say real. Cause Mike is a straight up dude. He he like no, I don't fuck with her. It ain't no changing my mind. It ain't faking it till I make it. Cause my ass, I'll be all that. I don't give a fuck. I'll fake it till I make it. I'll say I like you, kiss your ass, do whatever you want me to do until I fucking have to cut your neck. <laughs> but Mike is like, no, I do not like Chanel. I'm not changing my vote. I I pro I probably wouldn't have handled it like that. I probably would have been like, I go whatever y'all want to do. It don't matter, and still secretly just voted for her or some shit. You know, if it was that deep to me. I don't like him. I would honestly rather have Jonathan win than Mike. So I hope him growing down with Jonathan means that Jonathan win, if that's going to be the case. Ooh. Well, if the edit curse continues, it means there's not going to be an all-guys alliance. That'll fracture, and a guy's going to go home next episode. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of hoping that's what it means. <laughs> Bro, uh, me too. Fuck, fuck that sausage party shit, yo. <laughs> I hate all-girl alliances, too. I hate all-guy alliances. I hate any alliance that's based on the like uh, sex. I'm just not about it. It is kind of dumb. It is. Number two is Jonathan getting quite high here this week. Let's go. Let's Nobody's go. trying to take him out. I don't it boggles my mind. That's why I skilled my fucking order from least dumb to dumbest. <sighs> Wait, where'd you vote? Where'd you rank Jonathan Nick? I ranked him at like six. Oh, okay. It's good enough for me, actually. Oh, nice. I probably would have put him two only behind Omar for obvious reasons. But, I mean, I think Jonathan is doing a fucking fantastic job right now, yo. Like, Jeff cannot stop this motherfucker. Every single 
honestly, it's kind of fucked up how Jeff like kind of really be trying to throw Jonathan under the bus with challenges and shit. I think he is. I think he just has his mad crush on him. It's like, oh my god, Jonathan, you're so great at challenges. Like, bro, he's like, Jonathan is just whipping through this. Oh, but but Lindsay's close behind though. Like, (laughs) shut the fuck up and focus on Lindsay. Like, give her some support and credit instead of sucking Jonathan's dick. You know, like, God, get that dick out your mouth, Jeff. <laughs> it's true, though. That is true, because he could have been like, and Jonathan, who's been killing challenges all year, has Lindsay right behind him. Lindsay is right behind Jonathan. Yeah. Like, all, that's all you got to do, Jeff Probst. That's all you got to do. Then that's you can it. give Jonathan props for all the things he's done and say, well, but look at this. And it's true. Yeah. So, I mean, I feel like Jeff is... If Jonathan don't win, it's Jeff's fault, bruh. <laughs> what can you say bad about the count? You know, I, I can only harp on his counting skills so much. Everything else about his game has been pretty rock solid. Um, well, he has zero strategy. Let's be clear. He goes with the wind. But that's, that's a strategy, Nick. That's a uh, strategy. It is a strategy, but I mean, is it, is it a winning strategy, really? He's we'll, not a know he, we'll know when he wins. He's definitely a passenger there. He is. He's definitely a passenger, but he's the passenger who should have been the first one with that like ejector seat in their chair. And he's now faded it twice. They've had two just pristine oper- like opportunities to take him out and they haven't. And that makes me think that either they're starving and he catches that much fish or this guy's just in with everybody, man. Like he's just in there. He's, he's in. And honestly, it's it's probably a little above, but I can see him being in with people. He from the south, ain't he from the south? He from like Alabama, I think. Exactly, and that southern hospitality, that southern charm, that sir, ma'am, yes, sir, shit is gonna get him a long way. Because I'm sure it's hard to turn it off, especially as uh, especially if he from Alabama. Not saying nothing bad about nobody from Alabama, but uh. I kind of am. <laughs> that stuff is authentic. I think he is just that way. That is not a, you know, I, that is how a lot of folks are. Yeah. Like, and they just are like that. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's what I mean. You know, like he probably like without even trying has a great social game just from being from the South. It's something in, it's something in us Southerners that make us very social and shit. Any final thoughts on Jonathan? Oh my God, he doing so great! I just, go. uh, every time I ask this, here goes Aspen with her soliloquies about Jonathan. But go ahead, I'll let you do it. <laughs> Jonathan, I love you. Just know that, boy, I love you. Mm-hmm. We're gonna take this, uh, Jonathan. If you're watching this, you know what? I might have to come see you in Alabama. <laughs> your poem for next week needs to be a poem for Jonathan. <laughs> yeah, that's your work for next week. You got homework. I bet. Well, number one is Omer. I got to give him his credit. I have to give him his props, yo. Like, wow. Is he not kind of playing like Dot, though? You know, he wants to be good with literally everyone. Which would which go one of two ways. It could go like Dot and the online battle and implode on him if he does it too much. Or it could be like online survival and he could get far. Oof. This is a very tough game to play. No, it is. And it's even funny that you compare him to Dot because I'm like, damn, he do got a little Dot in his game right now. Shout out to Dot. What's up, Dot? Um, But he killing it. He killing it, bro. Re- regardless, Omar is fucking beasting this shit. Like, him him connecting with uh, Mike about his religion, I think was a big deal. Um, and Honestly, it's kind of it. It kind of remind me of me because that's how I am when I meet people who are like different from me. Or like when I started like staying with Jews and I had never even met a Jew up until this point. And so I'm like, yo, what the fuck? Teach me about it. Like turn me into a black Jew, yo. Like what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, good on Mike. But oh god, Omar is fucking. What is he? Is wait, what is he again? I forgot. Islam. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't know, bro. He fucking killing that shit. He doing such a great job, and he is so like 
how he made everybody think that he was on the bottom, but really is like getting he really fucking doing that shit that Drea should be doing with her ass, all them powers, but he pulling that shit off. Oh God. But wait, who who got Omar? Me, thank you very much. Maybe I'll win again. Pat myself on the back, win again. Draft master. God, a fucking course, is Nick. So, I, mean, I knocked him out of number one spot, but I did have him at number two. Um, I only knocked him out of number one spot because he didn't vote with the majority this last vote. So it does make me wonder if they ran that secondary plan without him. And if that's the case, that is not necessarily good for him because he's playing. Wait, who, who did he vote for? I think he voted for Romeo. Oh, so he 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 might didn't know, huh? That's a possibility. That's, that's you know, and that's what I I, I was kind of like I even told Nick before. So I was like, look, and if Omar shows that that was a strategic vote and he still is controlling everything, clearly, you know, I'll give him number one next week. I mean, but, I don't think he has to be controlling everything though to be doing well. Yeah, but if he, if he fell out of the core of six, like if there were six people that voted tight or five that voted tight, this vote, that's going to solidify those five, and you kind of don't want to be on the outside of that unless you're willing to just completely flip and grab Tori and Marianne and uh, Romeo. So I'm, I, that's why this next episode is going to be so huge for a lot of these players because it'll tell a little better tale. Uh, but yeah, that was my only concern for Omar because I think he's been playing great. Is is just that he didn't, he wasn't, he didn't vote with the majority on this one. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, besides, I didn't, I ain't know that honestly because I turned it off because I literally just just finished watching it. That's why I was late, but so I didn't get to watch who voted for who or next time. But I mean, from the from just the start to finish of the episode, I think Omar is just like, and maybe it's just the edit how they got him like laying on the ground, fucking with the fire, talking to fucking somebody, and then running off to the water well and talking to somebody. You know, like. But I do worry now that it up, that it might blow up in his face like how it did with Dot. Because, I mean, that shit, that people did not like that. They didn't. You can't please everybody. You want to. Like, if you're just a likable person and you're conflict averse, which most people are, I think, you don't want enemies in a game. But the fact is you can't have all friends in a game. If you do, it's just bad because then every person who gets out is either going to be pissed at you for voting against them or is going to be a friend who it, it just never works out well. You have to have at least a handful of people that you're willing that you don't that they don't that don't feel close to you. Otherwise they won't feel betrayed by you. You'll have a better chance to get them in jury, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You just you can't be friends with everybody. As much as it's human nature to want to be. Yeah, that is true. Any final thoughts of Omar? Well played, buddy. I'll do my ass when impression. You're doing great. I love you. I will write you a poem next week, Omar. If I'm ever in Canada, I'll come and visit you. <laughs> ah, that's right, Nick. Uh, I'm ready to hear this poem off. Oh yeah, let me write it. Let me write it down too, real quick. So I can Somebody write better it. get served. Any final thoughts on this episode or the rankings? <laughs> No, it was it was okay. I mean, like I said, the editing for me, like, come on, y'all, y'all, like, after fifty five thousand seasons, I have a fucking long this goddamn show been on. Like, bro, make it make it more realistic. Make it seem like it's actually not all written and scripted out, bro. Like, I know that that's the whole thing, but like, it is still supposed to be fake reality trash TV, like we like the reason why i'm fucking watching it so at least like make it believable for me like surprise me damn stop being so predictable survivor yeah this episode was a little too big brother for me we have this big old alliance and they're very unlikable and it's an easy vote i hate that shit right right it's boring i do predict sadly that next week that uh it will be romeo i do think it's gonna be a guy who goes next week and i think it'll be romeo I mean, that ain't even a surprise, though, because they was almost about to get his ass out this week. That's how I was going to I think, I think like, this will actually, because they have to do the whole split triumph thing. So I think it could switch things up. Oh, are they doing that? They're going 5-5? Five five? Yeah, like last season. 
That's why two people are going home. Oh. So I think that yeah, could that, switch things up. Enough that could change. change a lot. You could see Drea running right back to Romeo if the wrong tribe swaps uh, uh, drawn. Mm -hmm. And I hope he don't take her thirsty ass back <laughs> either. Just, just saying. If, it, if she's in a tribe of five and feels on the outs and she doesn't play one of her idols or take somebody else's or something, yeah. they would be terrible. If she goes home with four powers in her pocket, it'll be arguably the worst survivor feat of all time. But it would also be the best survivor play of all time because, like, damn, girl. Ah, no, she ain't going to do that. She ain't going to do she that. She got to start time. using some of these. They run out in a few rounds, don't they? They run out of what, six? At five or six, yeah. So, yeah, hopefully she wouldn't be keen enough to do that. And the, the extra vote will be useful later, as weird as that sounds, more than earlier. Um, so she needs to be just aware about these idols the next couple, you know. Take somebody soon before they get voted out with one or something. Yeah, or, like, play one for somebody. Make a move, bitch. Like, don't just, like, pull a power play, you know? Like, pull that dick out and piss on him. What are you doing? <laughs> she needs to do something. What if she talks everybody into like going for like Marianne or Mike and she says, I'm gonna take their idol away, and then they all vote for her and she gets out with their <laughs> with the idol. She just talked them all. I would like to see that. Could happen. That would be a good that would be a good finish to an episode. All right, fan guy. We about to put you on production team, boy. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we shall end it there until next week.